scientists have always been uh, people who uh, had a certain degree of uh, uncertainty connected with them in terms of the people that like to do accounts, I guess, and add up uh, bank accounts and own property. Because scientists and inventors, I guess, are in that category, would always come up with something that other people couldn't understand. And at certain pivotal times in the history of our world, those other things have changed our whole society, like the internal combustion engine or the atomic bomb, for instance. And so what has been the lot of the scientist in, in our society? Well, of course, he's stuck in an office, and he's only given small parts of a problem to solve. And his output is classified so that nobody can find out about it. I mean, you know, we look, about, look at classification of documents in terms of great secrets that are being unearthed in laboratories somewhere which are being withheld from us. But what I know is that without freedom in science, there's nothing discovered, there's nothing new. And so what happens is a poor man gives up his total freedom uh, in order to pursue the career of being a scientist and work on some small portion of a problem. And then the big problems don't get solved, like the problem of free energy, the problem of creating the pollutionless uh, uh, source of energy that may give us an electric car. You see, those are the big problems. How to feed everyone on this planet. Those, and, you know, how to, how to, you could go on. How to predict when the next big earthquake is going to come down in California. Not uh, to the point where everybody's afraid to say boo, but when people could get serious about it and maybe do something about it instead of being hit by surprise. So uh, those are the important things. I would like to say at this point that you're listening to KPFK Los Angeles. The program is Something's Happening and our live guest as of uh, August 7th, 1991, is Bruce De Palma, the inventor of the N machine. I'm sure what has transpired across the video screen in the last few minutes has stimulated your imagination. What we're talking about is an energy revolution which will transform the planet. Now just as in the past, when something like this comes along, like a flying machine, for instance, or a internal combustion engine or a locomotive, there are prior industries which have been established with older technologies which have to be displaced. Now certainly we can be amused at the fact that Edison's light bulb displaced the candle and the gas flame and the airplane displaced the Pony Express and the Wells Fargo stage. But now we're in a situation where we have to displace the oil well and the gasoline station by a machine which can extract energy from the unlimited sea of energy which surrounds us. Now the development of this idea and its exploitation in our world are problems which only the most adventurous among us should even think about getting involved with. Most of the financial people that have looked at the situation are frightened about the consequences to the presently established situations in the world based on atomic energy and oil. For those of us who can see the handwriting on the wall, all this must pass. We're at the end of the fossil fuel era. Uh, atomic energy, even if it were totally exploited, couldn't carry us more than 10 or 20 years more into the future. So we must adopt a new source of energy now. So the implications of all of this and its financial consequences are things which must be thought out and dwelt upon. And so I leave you with the thought that this is a situation which will come to pass. Whether someone in the United States decides to take this up and finance the development in America, 
is uh, open to question. We just don't know at this time. But we do know that the Indian government and the constructors in Germany, which are now moving into mass production, are going to preempt this invention unless we Americans decide to do something about our condition.